Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Aria, and in this tutorial we are finally doing Fire and Smoke. And since there are a lot of fire tutorials already, I figured we would add something a little extra. So once our simulation is complete, we're going to add a character to interact with the fire. Okay, so let's get started. So open up a new scene in Blender and let's delete the camera and the light here. And then we can use our default cube to create our domain. So let's select the default cube here and we'll scale it. So hit S to scale and type 2. Then click and then we just want to scale it once more on the Z axis. So hit S and then Z to lock it to the Z axis and we're going to type in 1.5. Okay, so let's bring it up by hitting G. Let's hit Z to lock it to the Z axis and we'll type in 3. And then let's just go up to the right here and click the X-ray toggle so we can see inside of our object here. Let's hit Shift A to add in a new mesh. Let's go to Mesh and go to Circle. And then we can just bring it up by hitting G, Z to lock it to the Z axis and typing in 1. Next let's hit Tab to go into Edit Mode here. Or you can go up to the left side here and click Edit Mode. And we just want to make sure that we've got some geometry here. So all we need to do is hit F to fill. And we're good to go. So hit Tab to go back into Object Mode or click up here on the left hand side. And then finally we can add in one more geometry. So let's hit Shift A, Mesh, and let's go to Cube. Okay, next let's scale it. So let's hit S to scale, Z to lock to the Z axis, and we're going to type in 0.05. Hit enter or click, and then we can scale it one more time. Hit S to scale, and then we're going to hit shift Z to lock it to the X and Y axis only. And then hit 4. Alright, and then finally we just want to bring it up. So let's just hide our cube here by clicking on it and hitting H. Or by clicking the I symbol here on the right. And then just quickly turn off X-ray mode here. We can click on our ground plane, hit G to move, Z to lock to the axis, and we can just drag it up till it's just underneath of our circle. You can hit 1 on the numpad to go into the side view here and click on the circle just to make sure that there's some space in between. And that's looking great. Now we can bring our cube back by either hitting Alt-H or we can just go up here and click this little icon here. Now we're ready to set up our simulation, so let's just click on our cube here, and this is going to be our domain, so we can rename that to domain, and then we're just going to go down to the right side here to the physics properties, and then over here we'll click fluid. For the type, we'll set that to domain, then next we can set the resolution to 64. For my animation, I have this set to 128, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to cut that in half just for speed. Okay, so next we can change this time scale here to 0.75, just so that our flames are moving um, a little bit slower. They tend to move a little bit fast in Mantaflow. Okay, and then we want to add some time steps here, so let's set the top to 8 and the minimum to 6. This is just to have calculations in between the frames, which will just help your fire to look a lot better. Then we can just scroll down here. Feel free to add uh, adaptive domain if you want. I'm just going to leave it off for this tutorial because it can be buggy at times, but it will definitely help speed up the caching of your simulation. So if you do have a slower computer, make sure to turn that on. Okay, and then next we'll click Dissolve here, and we can open these settings here, and we'll just change this to 10, and I found somewhere between 8 and 10 works for this simulation, depending on uh, how much resolution divisions you have. So if you find your uh, smoke is uh, hanging on too long, you can definitely lower this if you need to. And then we're going to add some noise, and we'll just open the settings here, and depending on your computer, you can set this between 2 and 4. So I'll set mine to 4 for this tutorial, and basically what this will do is just take your resolution and scale it up by 4, so you'll just get um, a little bit more detail in your simulation. But it will add uh, longer cache times to your simulation as well, so keep that in mind. Then we just want to open up the fire settings here, and we're just going to change the reactant speed to something smaller. And if you just hover over any one of these settings here, it will tell you what it does. So basically, higher values will give us smaller flames, so I'm just going to lower this just a little bit. And then just finally, we're going to change the start and end frames to the length of our animation here. So I'm just going to set mine to 120. By the way, if you want to have a preview of your simulation, this is the way to do it. Leave it on replay. Then once you add at least a flow object and go to frame 1, you'll get a preview of your fire. Before we cache our simulation, let's just add the other objects here. So let's click on our circle. So we can click fluid and we'll change the type to flow. Now we want to change from smoke to fire. 
By the way, even though we are doing fire and smoke, this is not the option that you want to use. This is um, something else. I believe it creates two separate emitters. So clicking fire will give you smoke as well. So just make sure that you're clicking that option. Then let's change the behavior here to inflow so that we have a continuous uh, inflow of fire as opposed to just one burst. Sometimes when you use a flat mesh like this, geometry doesn't work very well. It works better if you're using like a cube or something with volume. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to use geometry and it's not working. Alright, and then you can just add some sub steps here if you want just to help the look of the flames. Then the final thing we want to do is change the fuel to 1.5. Awesome, so now we can click on our ground plane here. We can click fluid one more time, change the type to effector, and I usually just like to give it a couple of sub steps just to help with the interaction, but you feel free to just leave that. Okay, then the final thing that you saw in my animation was a little walkway, so what we can do is just use our cube here. Let's hit Shift D, and then we'll click Z, and we can just bring this up a little bit click and then we can hit S to scale and Y to change the width. Next we can hit G and X just to bring it along the X axis here. And then we'll just hit S one more time to scale, X to lock to that axis and we can just bring it back till it's about the right size. Okay, we can just hit the decimal key just to orbit in here and just to make sure that it's lining up correctly. Let's hit G to move it and Z and then we'll hold shift just so it goes in very small increments and we can just bring it up slightly. Awesome and since we duplicated our other object there you can see that we've already got our physics set up. Oh and one more thing, we want to add a force here so we get kind of a spinning tornado fire thing so let's hit shift A. We can go all the way down to force field here and we'll click vortex. And then we can hit G to move it, Z to lock to that axis and type in 2.75. Then let's just change the strength to 3 here and we're going to change the inflow to minus 1. And then the very final thing we want to do is just change the power here to 0.5 and what this will do is just create a fall off for our strength uh, depending on how close our fire is to the vortex. So the closer it gets the stronger it will be and the farther away it is the less powerful the vortex will be. So now we're finally ready to bake our simulation here so let's just click on our domain. Make sure we're in the physics properties here. We can scroll all the way down to the bottom here. Let's change from replay to final. And our bake should only take around 10 minutes or so. It shouldn't take that long. And once it's done, we can add our volume shader. All right, awesome. So now that that's done, we can play through our simulation. Just keep in mind that you won't see anything until around frame 20 here. So we can just go to about frame 15 and just hit spacebar to play. So that's looking really good. So now we can move on to our shading. So the first thing we want to do is maybe add some lighting. So let's hit shift A and we can go down to light here. Let's click sun and then we'll just hit G and we can just drag it up to the side here. R to rotate and X to lock to the X axis just to give it a slight angle. And then we can hit R and Z to rotate it back like this. Just keep in mind when you're using a sun lamp, it doesn't really matter the position. The only thing that matters is the rotation. So now you'll see that if we go into our render preview that there is nothing to see. And that's because we don't have a shader yet. So let's go into the shading tab here up at the top. Click on the domain here and we can click new. Let's click away to deselect and we want to delete our principal shader here. So select it and hit delete. We're going to hit shift A and click search and we're going to type in principal. But instead of using the principal BSDF, we're going to use the principal volume. So click that. And as well, you want to make sure that your volume here is plugged into the volume socket, not the surface. All right, and then there's a lot of different things you can do uh, with the shader here, but we're just going to do a really basic one. So let's change the density to 750. Next, we'll change the black body intensity to 50. Finally, let's change the temperature to 1300. Okay, and then we just want to add two more nodes. So let's go over here, hit shift A, and we're going to add a color ramp. And we'll hit shift A again, and we're going to type in attribute. And in the name here, we want to type in flame, all lowercase letters, exactly like you see it here. And so when we plug this all in, basically this node here will know to reference the fire and shade it correctly. So let's hook the factor into the factor. We can hook the color here into the black body tint. 
And then we want to add a couple more colors here, but before we do that, let's just switch over to our rendered preview here. And you can see how this is looking in Eevee. It's not looking too bad. But for my animation, I used Cycles. So let's just go over to the render properties here. We can change this over to Cycles. And if you have a GPU, let's just click GPU as well. So now we can hit this little plus symbol here. And this is just a quick setup that I saw on a Blender Guru tutorial. So let's just bring the black over here. We're going to click on the second one here. We're just going to change this to a bright orange. And then we'll click this one here and we're going to change this to a bright yellow. And then if you just want to add a little bit more white into it, you can just drag this one over. Now you see that if we were to take away this attribute node here, the difference is it's not really doing what we want. So make sure again that you've got this plugged in to have it work correctly. Okay, and then we can just click our ground here. We can click new and feel free to add uh, any type of texture that you want. I think I added just a quick carbon fiber texture from textures.com, but for this tutorial here, I'm just going to do a real quick texture. You'll see that we've just kind of got this gray uh, reflection here, so let's make sure we add an HDRI so we can go over to our world properties here on the right and click there. And instead of having a gray color reflecting, we can click this dot, click environment texture, click open. Now you just want to find an HDRI, um, either one that you have, or you can download one for free online. I will put a link in the description to this one that I'm using here. Unfortunately, I don't actually remember where I got this, so I just got a link on my Patreon page, but uh, don't worry, it is free, so you can just go to the Patreon page and download that if you want. Then click open, and then we can just go up here to the render properties again. Let's go all the way down to film here. We can uncheck transparent and now you'll see that if we go up to the top here and turn off our overlays we more or less have our finished scene let's turn those back on we can click on this little plank hand instead of adding a new material we can just click this little down arrow here and add the same material as our other object and you can see now that we've got some really cool reflections happening here so now that we're done all the shading here we can head back into the layout tab here now we can just center our scene here and turn off our overlays and that's looking awesome. So hopefully your fire is looking really good like this. Like I said, if you want um, a bit more resolution, but it will definitely change the way the simulation looks. The only thing that you probably want to leave the same for this animation are these two here. Just because if you calculate too many steps in between, um, you'll probably get a completely different result. So feel free to check it out, but if you want to get this result, I would suggest leaving these two alone and you can change this here to around 128. So now I'm just going to quickly show you how I added in the character here. This is something that you may want to do uh, before you simulate. You can always rebake your simulation, but I just figured I'd do this in two separate parts just in case you were just interested in the fire. But if you do want to add in a character here, you can just go to mixamo.com and set up a free account. Feel free to use whatever character you want, but the one I used is named Arissa, so you can just type that in and click here. And then basically what I did was I went to the animations here, let's uncheck the filter here, and I downloaded three different animations. So the first one's called Standing 1H Magic, and it's just this one here where the character is reaching up. So you just want to click on that and just make any changes that you want. I think I slowed mine down then once you're happy with that, just make sure you click download here, change your frames per second to 24. Make sure your format is set to FBX and you can leave these as they are and click download. The second animation that I did is called idle transition and it's just this first one here where they step kind of forward there. This one should be good as is so you can just click download again. Make sure you've got these settings here and click download. And the final animation that I did is called standard walk. And again, you can use this method with uh, any any animations, but I just felt that these three work together really well. So once you got that, you just want to make sure this one is set to in place. And we can just animate her movement uh, using an empty. And then click download. Okay, so now that we're back into Blender here, let's just go up to the top right here and let's change our filters. We're going to add the real time and the render filter and we're just going to turn off our domain for now. Just so that our viewport isn't moving too slowly. Then we're just going to go to File and Import and click FBX. 
then we can just click our first animation here, which is the magic, and click import. And then we can just go to file import FPX again here. And I'm noticing that since this animation is about half the length of my original one, we may not need three. So let's just try our walk in place here, import that. Now you'll see on the top right here, we've got our two armatures, our first and our second one. So let's just click on the second one here. We can go down to the timeline window here. If your keyframes aren't yellow, just hover here and you can hit A to select everything. Hold Control and hit C to copy. Now we can open up this entire thing here. We're going to click on armature, scroll all the way down and shift click. So we've selected everything of our second animation and we're going to right click and hit delete. Now you can just click on one of the bones here or click the armature up here and we can just go to frame 65 and hit paste. So now you'll see that if we hit play, we've kind of got a transition in between the two of these here. But this is really not the position that we want it to be in. So let's just click away here. We're going to hit shift A. We'll go down to empty and click plane axis. Next we'll hit GZ just to bring this up just above our character here. Now let's just go over to our collections here and we're going to open up our armature. Let's click on the armature and we can scroll all the way down. Shift click so that we have all of our character here. Continue scrolling down until you see the empty. We're going to hold control and click on empty here. So now you'll see that everything is orange and our empty is yellow. So we can hold control and hit P to parent our object and we just want to select our second option here. And now if you click on the empty here, we can use this to put our character in place. So let's just hit GZ to bring it up. And then R to rotate and Z to lock it to that axis and we'll just face it till it's in front of us here. And now we'll just go to frame one and we can hit play to watch our animation. Awesome, so that's looking pretty good. Let's just go to frame 65 here. Now we can animate the empty. So let's just hit I to bring up our keyframe menu and we can click location. Okay, and then this is just a bit of a guessing game. So let's go to frame 120 here, just to the all the way to the end. And we're gonna hit G to move and X to lock to that axis. And we'll just bring it out till it's pretty far out here. And we can hit I and keyframe our location. Now we just want to go back to 65, but before we play our animation, we want to change one more thing here. So let's go up to the top left until you see this little plus symbol. Click and we're just going to drag out a secondary window. Let's click and go into the graph editor and you can see that our MD is animating on a Bezier curve, which is not what we want. So hit A to make sure everything is selected. Then right click, let's go to interpolation mode and click linear. Okay, just hover over the center here, right click, join areas and click over here to close that window. Now we can hit play to see how our animation looks and you can see that it's obviously moving too quickly. So let's just grab here and give ourselves some more room here. Alright, so we can drag our last keyframe out to about 160 here just to see if that works a little bit better. It is sliding a little bit, so we can just go a little bit further, maybe 165, and then play it again. Now that's looking pretty good, so I think that's going to work. And then we can just give ourselves um, a few more frames here, so let's type in 150. Just so we can see our character walking a bit further, and since we are re simulating, we can just make sure we take that into account. And you just want to make sure that the hand is coming up around frame 20, which it is, so that's perfect when our simulation starts. And then our character is going to walk through the flames at about this time here, so let's just click on our emitter. We just want to click away here and then just select these couple keyframes, and let's just bring these up till around 100. Just so that when our character is walking through, they're actually walking through the flames. So now we want to make sure that our character interacts with the flames. So we can just open up our MD here and feel free to rename this to character or something just in case you forget. And then basically what we want to do is just click the geo here. We can go all the way down to the bottom. Shift click here and then we can hover into our 3D window here. We're going to hit shift D and then hit escape. And before we do anything else, we're going to hold control and hit J. So now you can see that if we scroll all the way up to the top here, we've got a geometry that um, encompasses all of the geometries of the character. And the reason we did that is just so we can add that as a fluid effector instead of having to do that to every one of these here. Okay, so let's click fluid. We just need to select a vector from the type. And then just make sure that we turn this off in the render and the viewport just so we don't have geometries that are crashing. 
Now we're finally ready to simulate, so let's just uh, go up to the top right here and bring our domain back. We can click on our domain and scroll all the way to the bottom, and we're just going to hit free. And then we're just going to bake one more time for another 10 minutes, and we'll see our final result. Awesome, so now that that's done, we can just pick a frame here that we like. Stay around frame 100 when our character is walking through the fire here. And we can just check our render preview here. We can just turn off our overlays here as well. And you can see that everything is looking awesome. So hopefully yours is looking this good too. Uh, just the very last thing that I want to do is just show you a couple things with the render. Just because I know that if you are using cycles and rendering something like this, it can take quite a bit of time. So we can just quickly set up a camera. Let's just turn our overlays back on and go into our flat shading. We'll hit Shift A, click camera, and then we can just set our viewport up to somewhere about that we like. Hold Control Alt and hit zero on the numpad. Let's go over to the camera settings here on the right and change the focal length to 35. If you want, you can add some depth of field as well. Just keep in mind that this will slow down your simulation, but it will make it look a little bit nicer. So we're just going to select our first uh, geo here. And then finally, we'll just change our f-stop to something lower, say like one. And we should be good to go. All right, so let's just go into the rendering tab here. We can just set our render samples to 64 here, just so it's a bit quicker. If you're using a GPU, just go to performance here and just change your tile size to 256 just to get the best results. And we can just go here. Let's uh, leave this to 1080p here. And if you want to just change the temporary folder to somewhere that you want to save your images. If you'd rather save a movie, you can of course do that here, but I would suggest saving out image files and then putting them together later on, either inside Blender or a different program. Then once we've got that set up, we can click render and click render image. And I just want to stop it. You'll see that it's taking uh, quite a bit of time here. So one thing that you can do with certain uh, fire simulations is if you go into the render settings here, you can go down to the volumes and instead of leaving this at one, you could actually set this to something a little bit higher if your computer is really slow and you can get some better results. And in certain situations, uh, you wouldn't be able to do this. You'd actually want to go the other way. You'd want to go to something smaller. But for what we're doing today, this will work just fine. It won't cause any problems. So let's just set this to 3 or even 5 if you like. And then we can just change our max steps here to 512 as well. Like I said, this is all just going to lower your render times for your animation. So if you are using your own computer, I definitely recommend doing these settings here. But if you're using something like a render farm, then feel free free to just leave these at default. And then one more time we'll click render and render image. So there's one of our final images there. Obviously there's a lot of noise here so you can up the render samples here or if you want to save some time you can just go over to the compositing tab here. If you click use notes you'll see that it brings up our layers here and there's a couple of slots here that you may not see so just go over to the layers properties here and make sure that you've got your denoising data on to add those extra channels in. And if we hit shift A we can search for a node called denoise. Now we just want to take our noisy image to the image, denoising normal to the normal, and the denoising albedo to the albedo. Let's drag this over here and we can just bring our image and plug it into our new output there. So if we go back to rendering and render our image again, you'll see that you get a lot smoother of an image. Uh, just make sure that you do up the resolution a little bit here just so it's not too soft looking. And the other thing that can help as well is if you just change the resolution here to something like 150% or 200% for 4K, you will also get a far better result. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I'm hoping to do more fire simulation in the future, so stay tuned for that. And if you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe and also feel free to check out my Patreon page and if you're able to support. That would be greatly appreciated and it will help me to continue to do these things into the future. Alright, see you soon. Bye!